<laughs> no, damn you don't get. This is not a laughing matter. <laughs> you are still laughing. Don't forget it. I said that, that it's not just about, the story wasn't just a story. It's life. It's real. It's almost what is a true life story. Almost like a true life story, you know. You know, so it's, it's real. You know, so after the story was, you know, shot and produced and released and edited, and we give God the glory for that, and um, we edited it. The sound was done by my brother Joshua, you know, and just a day to the time we will finally be putting the movie out on YouTube. We've already done trailer for it. We've done adverts, and every, everybody is expecting Gaming Part 2 to come out. And every, people are ex anticipating, expecting. So that so it happened that night while I was sleeping. You know, in the middle of the night, the church just called me. My phone rang. I said it was Joshua. I said, Joshua, what's up? So damn, we have a problem. His voice was shaking. And I know that voice when Joshua is in trouble. That's the voice. His voice was shaking. So we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, Baby hard drive has crashed. And the backup tool is messing up. Had <laughs> this crashed? And all you can do right now is to laugh, damn it, Lola. Oh, no, no, no. I, I am not expecting this. You are still laughing? <laughs> this is a very serious matter. Damn, I can't get this. Oh, okay. So what you are trying to tell us is that when we are in the waiting room, waiting on the Lord, sometimes we need to laugh at the devil. Oh, so that we can confuse him and he doesn't know what to think of us anymore. That's a good point there. Let's laugh at the devil because you know what? This destiny, where we are going to, we will get there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing the devil can do because the Bible says that the one that lives inside of us is greater than the one that lives in the world. We will win in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? No one, not even the devil. God is for us and no one can be against us. The eyes that watch over our lives, he does not sleep. This our God does not slumber. Once again, you are welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PBO, the stories behind the movies. Welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. That's the story behind, behind the, the movies. movies. This is Beyond Entertainment. And this is Beyond Entertainment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. We thank God for this brand new year. 2022 is going to be great. Our year of abundant harvest. Not just a year of abundant harvest, but a whole season of abundant harvest for you and for me in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This particular show is an exclusive one, of course, with Damilola Mike Bamiloye. We talked to him, asked him questions about Bemi 2 because we were all waiting for Bemi 2. It was announced months, several months ago, that it was coming out. And of course, we saw the trailer. And all of us were anticipating, when is Baby Season 2 coming out? When is it coming out? When is it coming out? They told us next week or so, whether next day. And all of a sudden, shh, we were not hearing anything again until Dami now came up and said, this, this happened. And it's like, what? But in Beyond Entertainment Show, the stories behind the movies, we decided to take our inquiries to Dami Lola. Like they say, it's good to hear from the horse's mouth. Dami, you are not a horse, but it is time for you to tell us what really happened behind the scene that made Bemi to be the waiting room. Because we were all waiting, and we waited and waited. But we thank God that at last, it came out and we saw it. So, Dami, I think the first thing to do is for you to introduce yourself 
Can we meet you? To work out, yes or no? Yes. What will make a son to ask his so called father to leave his house? Nothing but desperation. Martin's had an intention. Stop, please stop. A hidden agenda which you clearly altered by your uninvited visit. Stop, stop, stop. The next day, Martin's invited Flora to, to that empty class to finish what he has started. You were not there to stop him. But fate was waiting to stop him. I swear God, will punish you. God will punish you for what you are doing. Does that make stop in my court? Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? Don't don't tell me to stop. Tell him. Don't don't Martin, tell me to stop. Tell him to stop. Come on, Martin. Does that make sense? Stop. I don't think they're not allowed. Martin. Don't tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Your father loved me, your father treated me like a son. But all you did was treat me like a filthy rat now. Come on, come on. If I can't say, I swear to God, I will leave the jail and tell you if I have got a good love. I will tell you what I have got a good love. My name is Damilola Mike Bamiloye. I'm a drama minister, a gospel filmmaker. And um, that's much about me. I'm married to Dr. Emanuela. Mike Bamiloye, and we have two beautiful daughters, and that's Gloria and Grace Mike Bamiloye. We missed season. That was, first of all, there was nothing like season because it was supposed to be a film on its own. You know, Bami, that was supposed to be the um, ideas, but it wasn't supposed to be as that wasn't supposed to be a sequel to Bami. It was supposed to be Bami, and I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't feel there was going to be a part two. I didn't feel there was need for a part two, you know. So because the film was a complete film on its own, the story ended wonderfully. So I felt, huh, if you're going to do a part two, it has to top part one. Because God forbid you do a part two and it's you know runs down the testimonies of part one. And God forbid, you know. So I was hoping there won't be a part two because I just like the way part one ended. So let's just move on to other ones. You know, then my wife wrote, um, kept telling me about this, and ah, I'm, I'm having a feeling to write Bimmy Part Two. And for a long time, I was, you know, you know, bringing other things to quiet down the idea of Bimmy Part Two because I didn't just want another Part Two. I didn't, I wasn't ready for that challenge. So she'll come up again and say, Ah, I feel God is leading me to write Bimmy Part Two. And I'll be like, okay, you know what? There's Abattoir. Abattoir is coming up. God is giving us an still on Abattoir. And she'll come again and say, oh, fine. I'll work on Abattoir. We'll do Abattoir. Later, she'll come again. I feel that there's more to Bimi. Imagine Bimi and John, you know, having, you know, challenges and everything. People like to know that. So I'll be like, okay, you know, there's this another story. That I just I just want to just get rid of it. I didn't want anything part two coming up until she just had me in the corner that I couldn't just help. So she wrote the script. My feet just launched out, wrote the script wrote the story and gave it to me. I said, Baby Part 2 is out. And you know, I have learned over time from my father and from um, experienced people who are married that, you know, when an idea comes from your spouse, from your wife, an idea comes, you don't shut the idea down. You encourage the idea. You, 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 you're, you're always happy. Don't allow your intentions, your true intentions of what you feel about the idea, just make sure you encourage, you encourage your wife, you know. So when she gave, gave me the idea of baby part two, I was like, wow, God is good. Wow, we have been praying for this. Wow, I mean, this is amazing. Glory be to God. We worship God. Uh, we're praising God. We thank God. And in my mind, I was like, what am I getting myself into? Baby part two, how come? Yeah, how, how, how? That's in my mind, you know, of course. You know, so when she, when I read the story, um, I, 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 I went to a secret place and I prayed about it. I said, God, this story is wonderful, but it can be better. And I know there is more revelation to what you have in mind. We thank God for going part one. Going part two has to be deeper. It has to be stronger. And it has to, it has to, it has to hit. God, this story has to hit. So we spend time in the presence of God to receive a revelation of what he wants to share with these people and one thing god kept hammering was the waiting room the waiting room you know the waiting room and fortunately my wife and i actually experienced situations where we had to pass through different you know different things and one of the things we passed through prior to the release of Bimipatu was that 
I've not shared this with anyone before. This is the first time I'll be sharing it in Beyond Entertainment. What made me realize was that he made us pass through that experience so that when I'm narrating, that's God is good. When I'm narrating the story of Bemi part two, you will have you will have a pool of let me use the word resources to draw out inspiration that will be a blessing to a lot of people. Sometimes we go through what is what is called pain. But God will make you pass through a pain so that that pain will be a channel of blessing to other people. I don't know. So, uh, so it's like you're going through a mess somehow. So that that mess at the end of the day will be a message to other people. So when I was writing the story of John, I had an understanding, a depth of what John was passing through. When John lost that baby and he was crying and he was broken and he was sad and they were crying and they were singing and worshiping together and Bim was in the bedroom worshiping God, J John was in the you know, room worshiping God, that was almost exactly what we passed through. It was out of that experience, that pain, that that, that, that experience, that um, story was crafted, you know. So that shows that God sometimes makes us pass through something, not just for ourselves, but for thousands of people. Who we also pass through that thing, and at the end of the day, is to give back to glorious testimony. Baby, <laughs> we lost him. Ah, we lost our baby. <laughs> no. So we went on location and we shot so after the movie was with the script was written and everything you know don't forget it i said that, that it's not just about the story wasn't just a story it's life it's real it's almost but it's a true life story almost like a true life story you know you know so it's, it's real you know so after the story was you know shot with and produced and released and edited and we give God the glory for that and um, we edited it the sound was done by my brother Joshua you know and just a day to the time we will finally be putting the movie out on YouTube we've already done trailer for it we've done advert and every, everybody is expecting Gamey Part 2 to come out and every, people are ex anticipating expecting so that so it happened that night while I was sleeping, you know, in the middle of the night, the church just called me. My phone rang. So it was Joshua. I said, Joshua, what's up? Said, Damn, we have a problem. His voice was shaking. And I know that voice when Joshua is in trouble. That's the voice. His voice was shaking. So we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, Baby hard drive has crashed. And the backup tool is messing up. In fact, the backup tool has crashed. I said, what do you mean two hard drives have crashed? And two, what's going on? So I jumped out of my bed in the middle of the night. We were supposed to release the movie the next day, there about. And so we're checking again as well that it's not just open. What nothing was happening. The hard drive is not responding. We were both shaking. I was like, God help us, help us. And we're looking around what to do. And so we asked some of the brethren to just take the hard drive to Lagos to fix it and everything. 
and we got the bad news that looks we've lost some data after like four or five days we kept pushing we kept pushing you know we kept pushing the dates with the release date then we got the bad news from the brethren i won't say bad news we got the news from the brethren that we were able to retrieve some you know data and that was at least that made us relax that okay at least we we're able to get some data because so many of the data were lost and the unfortunate thing is that we can't just go on location because then my wife again was pregnant with our baby grace so we can't just call for location so before you can even go on location again there has to be you know she has to give back to grace everything has to set to so many things are just happening so many things are going on in my mind the sister that, that, that acted booky too she was pregnant you know so both the sister that acted booky and my wife are both pregnant so you can't call them on location so i kept asking how we going to do it i'm going to cover the stomach with pillow when the baby is talking you just carry a pillow and just cover us and it's okay. so it wasn't just making sense so you just have to just suspend baby indefinitely and um, we went on to do other productions like um, legion it was immediately we shot Legion released the day. Legion was Legion shoot was it have everything happened within two, three weeks. It was fast because we know that people are waiting for something. So we just released Legion and we posted it. And by the grace of God, we were able to do other productions. Like the Joy came out. By the grace of God, we shot up a Joy, we posted it. Then December, we went back on set. Then, you know, Ella has given had given back everything that is, she was ready for it. And so we, we, we came back and we shot Bemi. And so Wim was on holiday for Wim was in the waiting room. Baby part two was also in the waiting room for like seven months thereabouts. Am I that bad looking that no one could propose to? No, I will not <laughs> allow you to say that about yourself. No, no. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. Absolutely nothing. I have made up my mind that if God doesn't answer me, I'll have to answer myself. How do you mean? There are alternatives. I'm not afraid to take them. I'm only afraid to eat 40 as a single lady. Mm. <laughs> the waiting room. Mm. You mean the one outside? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. What about it? Um, how long did it take before the secretary told you that it is your time. My time? Yeah, the, the time to come in and see me. Well, I met a few people on ground, so it took like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Well, so, what were you doing? Sitting. And? Waiting. <laughs> waiting. God's waiting room. <laughs> It's not easy for anyone. Sometimes you are wondering when the heavenly secretary will open the door and say, please come in. The master is ready to attend to you, but you just have to sit and wait. You know the door will be opened for everyone, but the most difficult thing is anticipating the exact time that this will happen. Because it may be soon and it may be later. But make no mistake, our God will answer everyone in that room. If you are in the waiting room of the Lord, then he will answer you. You know, so at the end of the day, we came and we finally we shot, we shot the scenes that were missing. My worry was that, hope there won't be continuity issues because it's, I noticed, even me myself, I noticed, I don't know how people didn't notice that sometimes my wife was fatter in some places and sometimes she was slimmer in some places. And for John, some places she had, he had full haircut, some places he had low haircut. But all those flaws, no one noticed because the power of God was just all through the film. And when the power of God is in something, it covers up all the flaws and all the errors in, in that thing. You know, so no one noticed all those things. And so today we're just giving God the glory for the testimonies. People are talking about the testimonies, how it has blessed their life, how they begin to understand the true meaning of the waiting room. You know, it's a message for all of us too, for we personally, you know, that God used that as an example of what the waiting room looks like, you know, because Bimi part two also passed through the waiting room and at the end of the day, the result was glorious. You know, so for those outside there who are also going through that waiting period, 
at the end of the day, it's going to be glorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that's the testimony for me. But make no mistake, our God will answer everyone in that room. If you are in the waiting room of the Lord, then He will answer you. They come by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And they, they come basically by waiting in God's presence. You know, they cannot... Thank God the story of the title, the, the, the subtitle of the movie is The Waiting Room. When you want to receive from God, receive revelation from God, it's not, it's not a place to just rush, rush in and rush out. You have to tarry. You tarry in His presence. And that happens to me a lot. Some things will not flow. Some things will not come. Some revelations will not come. If you don't cultivate the habit of spending time in His presence, to receive. And those things can just come in form of just one sentence. It can just be one sentence that you will write, that the Holy Spirit will inspire you to write, that will be the breakthrough, or that will be the deliverance of somebody's life. But even you as the writer, you don't know that sentence. You don't even know what it is. That is why it's very important for you to wait in God's presence. You know, we are not entertainers. We are ministers. And we minister through drama. So if we are ministers, that means the same sacrifice that the pastor will pay in waiting, in praying, and in receiving. It's the same thing you are going to pay. You have, you have to pay to wait and receive. You can't undermine these things. They are very important. So again, it's all to the glory of God. God is the one that gives the inspiration. The Holy Spirit, that is the breath of the Holy Spirit in whatever you write, when you tarry in His presence, it breathes into it and it gives it life for people who are there, people out there. You know. What am I going on? Oh, this is your new home. Am I kidnapped? Oh, does it look like you are? Can I talk to my mom? Oh, I'm your new mommy. You can tell me anything. Talk to me. Why do you want me? You really want to know? Someone stole something that was rightfully mine, and I've been looking for it. And have you found it? Maybe. Someone stole my friend's notebook two days ago. I prayed for him, and he found it. If I pray for you, Jesus will help you find what you're looking for. But if you take another person's property, you face the consequences of stealing. Can I pray for you? You can try. Dear Jesus, Auntie, please close your eyes. Oh, I prefer them open. Thank you. Dear Jesus, Auntie is looking for what was stolen from her. I don't know it, but you are the all knowing. I pray you help her find this so that she will release me to my own parents in Jesus' name. Don't worry, Auntie. Jesus will help you find what you are looking for. Just believe in Jesus. Girl, <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Why did you say that? Because Jesus is not a magician. But he's a miracle worker. See, my mom oh. and my dad fight always. And I pray to God to help them love each other. Guess what? What? I conducted the wedding ceremony in our house. You? Yes, but the only thing I told them to do that they did not do is just to kiss each other. I guess that was because you were there. But I closed my eyes, still they did not kiss each other. Can you imagine? Sorry about that. It's okay, auntie. You know, girls are no man's ways. Maybe God has another way of bringing them together, you know? <sighs> Do I know? No, wait. Girl! You do know you're kidnapped, right? You're not even crying. Jesus is with me. Why should I cry? Oh. 
What? I think we're exaggerating. You, you can call me Maggie. Nice meeting you, Auntie Maggie. <laughs> what kind of girl are you? The Jesus kind of girl. Of all the things that I expected that we tried in Bengi, that was the least thing that I expected that I was, that I was going to try. I think it surprises me myself. And when I find out that that, was, that is what people are holding on to and saying, yeah, I'm a Jesus kind of guy. And, and, and it's a wonderful thing that the youth can actually make that move and say, I'm a Jesus kind of girl, I'm a Jesus kind of guy. Some people say, I'm a Jesus kind of, you are a Jesus kind of couple as a husband and wife. You know, it's amazing. But as I said, you know, when you're writing some things and the Holy Spirit is breathing through you and is writing those things through you, you don't know which one will be the catch. You don't know which one will read, the audience will grab and say, yes, this is my deliverance. You don't know. That is why it's important for you to tarry. And as for the act of God, it's amazing. It was, I said, when the Holy Spirit breathes on the walk, eh? when the Holy Spirit breathes on the walk, it covers the flaws. It covers the errors on that floor, of that walk. Because beauty, beauty, <laughs> beauty was a wonderful person on set. But Beauty was one of the actors that gave us the most stress on set. Beauty, act this thing. Beauty, speak out. Beauty, do this. Beauty. It got to a point, I just had to call my face. I said, you know what? Let it come out. Whether, however it comes out, let it come out. Like, I just got tired. To show you that God uses people that you don't even expect. At the end of the day, when people watch the film, and I was reading the comments, and people had said that this lady, this, who is this brilliant actor, this fantastic actor, who is this amazing actor? You just need to realize that, look, guys, it's more than just the acting. There is a spirit at work that even we did not recognize. This, 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 this person gave me stress on set. It gave all of us stress on set. It goes to a point, the sound that tell her, speak out now, do this now, and everything. Now. And she was trying her best, but she's, a, she, she's, not, she's not someone that shouts and talks out loud. You know, so she was just trying her best. You know, but when the Holy Spirit takes over something, eh, it uses the weak things. The things that people undermine, things that people don't even regard. Those are the things that the Holy Spirit will now use to glorify Himself. And so when I see this kind of thing trending, people talking about I'm a Jesus kind of girl, and people say, Ah, that this girl, I want to have this kind of girl. This girl is a fantastic person. I say, to God be the glory. That's my, that's my end, like end of discussion statement. So God be the glory because it's only God that could have done it. It's only God that could have used people who are imperfect, people who are not professionals. People who don't know how to do anything, and God uses them for His glory. You know, so that's the testimony behind it. Wow! So you mean that you had this kind of challenge with beauty, <laughs> beauty or what? Wow! 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 And I think this is a big lesson for all of us. A very, very serious lesson. Look at the young lady; they had a lot of challenge with behind the camera, behind the scene. But look at what it has turned out to. This our God is wonderful. Sometimes what you don't think is what he is doing. Where you are not thinking it will come through, that is where it will come through. Our God is wonderful. Our God is really great, you know. Can you imagine even the director getting frustrated on set? From that frustration, God has brought out this trend. Even me, I'm a Jesus kind of guy, oh, and my wife is a Jesus kind of girl. We are in this Jesus thing together, and we will do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Stick to this show. When I got the first draft of Wimmy, I read it through it, and I scored that John and his friend, his, John's friends were not in the first draft. One of the things I told my wife, I said that they have to be. There's no how you can write Wimmy and John's friends will not be in Wimmy. It's not possible. You have been good friends to me. I value your relationship with me. Hey, you know, during the challenge that has to do with my maritals, your comfort, your encouragement, your advice was key. Oh, Fred, I know. Your comfort was life. Your encouragement, hope. But your advice was useless. What? Useless. Useless. But I don't blame you. It's not your fault. 
You see, I, I discovered that it because you have a shallow and carnal way of thinking. Your point of view was so shallow and carnal. Uh, but nevertheless, friends, nevertheless, I appreciate you. But, but, but John, keep your appreciation. Oh. No, no, that, that is right to hold on. You keep your appreciation. Ah. Tell me one advice that we have ever given you. I mean, and it has been nonsense. Tell, just tell me one. Telling me to go and buy flowers, to go down on one knee and to propose to my wife. Ah. Uh -huh. How is that canal? How is that spiritual? Uh, everybody's buying flowers now. I'm not everybody. No one is asking you to be everybody. Then why did you tell me to buy flowers and go down on one knee to propose to my wife? Because everybody is doing it. Can you give me one Bible character who went on one knee to propose to his wife? Ross, I can give you five. Go on, I'm listening. No, if you dare me, I can give you five. Okay. Because those were like highlights of John, John's character in Game of Part 1. If you look at John and his friends in Game of Part 1, they're part of the, they're part of the scenes that make people laugh the most. They're part of the scenes that... Um, those friends kind of brought out the weakness of John. They exposed the vulnerability of John. You know, because John was so open to these guys. You know, so when I read the first John, I spoke that they're not there. I said, no, they just have to be there. You know, so uh, that was... That was so now... Now, looking through episode part one, episode one of a baby part one, and somebody actually extracted those scenes. Um, the scenes when John was like, I will never share this, share a single tear. I will never share a single tear. The next thing you see John crying and bring a bucket of tears, and the John and the friends encouraging him and everything. So tell her that I'm sorry, but her mind is made up, it's over. Debbie, that's too harsh. Sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. For some time now, I've been observing you. You've not touched your food. Oh, no problem. My fiancé broke up. Oh. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm sorry. That must that must be a very painful thing, sir. Sorry. No, no, no. That's not you. I tell you, that's not you. Okay. <coughs> it's not beyond what God can handle. As in, there are other things to deal with than to than, than, than to waste my tear on, on a sister. My redeemer lives. God does not forsake me. He still loves me. God loves me. And I know. I know. But I know. I, I will not waste a single tear. A single tear on a sister. No, I won't. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Lord. Why have thou forsaken me? And also the scene where they were advising John on how to propose to his wife. You know, so I thought to myself, I said, there has to be a continuity to this. There's going to be a part two. There has to be, also be, a, there has to be a continuity to John and his friends. And I'm glad the way it turned out to be, you know. Because to me, they're like the highlights of John's um, character. They really bring out the character of John. And it's quite, that scene is very hilarious because those two friends were telling John about himself. But John was blind to see that they were actually talking about himself because of spiritual pride. Yes, come in. Sister Buki! Hi! Sister Buki! How are you? Fine. How is everything? I'm fine. Ha! You came around? Do you know Sister Buki? Sister Buki! She is a member of the protocol team in church. She usually stay around that uh, that uh, wing. She you wow you you know Sister Buki now. <laughs> hey, Sister Buki, meet my wonderful friends. Nice meeting you. Same here, sir. Hi, but what what brought you here? I was just passing by and I thought to just prepare this meal for you. It is just a talking to appreciate you for what God used you to do in my life. <laughs> Thank you so much for those encouragements, sir. To God be the glory. And that's why you have come with these two bogus schooler. <laughs> Blue and pink. And for you to know that I'm so famished. 
that means spiritual sensitivity and discernment. Oh, That's exactly, it. sir. Okay. God bless you. Friends, I'll be right back. Let me just, you know. Sister Buki! Thank you very much. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Lady, but the problem is, how do we let, make this brother know what we are thinking? Ah, I don't know. God will give you the wisdom. Hey, but wait, what are we thinking? Sister Buki! <laughs> you see, friends, God will just have to bless this sister for me. And to think that she is single. She is single? She is. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to open this, the, you know, I've not opened this kind of, can, can you kindly help me to open? I do, yeah, help me to open. No, no problem. No, no. I think, okay. Uh, yeah. you, you must have been using this kind of cooler at home for you to have known that. <laughs> Do, do you care for rice? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Do you, you want rice? Very okay. Yeah, you're yeah, okay. Jollof rice, so? Do you want jollof? I'm very okay. Yeah, okay. What of chicken? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm okay, but I don't know about you. <laughs> you know, he felt so lonely at her singleness. But the Lord gave me the right word to comfort her. Oh, you comforted her? Yeah. I just love her. You love her? You love her so much. Ah, uh, yes, now. She is full of grace and life. Hmm. Chicken. But, bro, John, the issue we have on the ground now. Mm. Yeah, so it's about um, a man of God who, you know, he has some marital challenges. Salad? Do you want salad? I'm fine. You are fine. Okay. So he wants, he has some marital challenges, all right? And there's this sister who he happened to mentor, you know. But the issue on ground now is that um, they are getting too close. You know, mm -hmm. the association and their closeness is becoming so uncomfortable for everybody in, yeah. the, in the church, especially yeah. we as friends, yes. you know. And we, we've been trying to warn this brother. We've been trying, we don't even know how to like, even warn the brother, you know. So, uh, uh, sometimes we, the, some funny things happen, like uh, the sister brings food for the brother, and the brother even eats the food of the sister. Mm -hmm. Imagine uh, not thinking of his wife. As he, he even said that he loves the sister. He said that? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. can, can you imagine that? Huh? Now our fear now is that we don't want this brother to fall into temptation. Have you spoken to him? No. No. What are you waiting for? You know, this is the problem with our generation. Even some people have to be brought out publicly and spoken to. Can you help us speak to this brother? Yeah. Sure I can. Lack of spiritual discernment. They are just distracted. I mean, you know, this brother needs to come to the realization that the devil is after his life and is bringing distraction and worry to cause a problem in the home. So proud of himself, proud of what God has done in his life that he didn't realize that they were actually talking about him. So it's actually possible to feel you are overly righteous. It's actually possible to brag about your righteousness. That all the weaknesses in your life, you 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 just just shun them. You don't pay attention to them. All those little weaknesses, you don't pay attention to them. Even when people are actually spotlighting them, showing that you have errors in this area. But because of your righteousness, your spirituality, you, 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 you feel like you are overly righteous, that you don't see all those little, little, little spots, you know. You know, so that's the lesson for me in John and his friends, between John and his friends, that look, it's one thing to, to brag about what God has done through you, but at the same time, you have to be very, very, very careful. You have to be very, very, very careful. All the little, little spots, you know, don't don't disregard those little, little spots, those little, little things that the Holy Spirit will be, will be 
will be shining light to in your life, you know. As ministers, too, you have to be very careful. You know, as we are up and doing, doing God's work, jumping up and down, there are some things that we need to take note of. The little things that we disregard, that the Holy Spirit will be shining light to. We need to pay attention to those things. It's possible to be speaking rema, blasting in tongues, you know. You have the gift of prophecy. You can do this. You can do that. You have the spirit of the summer. You can do this. But the little things in your life, like simple things, you don't apologize when you do wrong. To say I'm sorry is an offense. You are keeping company with females too much. But you just disregard them. And to the end, John still did not realize them until Sister Bookie shows is, you know, is our true color. Sister Bookie, what are you doing? I'm looking for your attention. Please sit. Not until you tell me what's going on with you. We lost the baby. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do for you? No, no, no worry. We're fine. No, you're not. Can I offer you something? What? You know, when I was a little girl, I lost my parents in a car accident. My grandmother looked at me and didn't know what to say to me. Sorry was too insignificant and too powerless to fix my broken heart. But she offered me something that fixed me up and made me whole. A simple hug. John, can I... Can I offer you a hug? Come on, just a hug. That would be necessary. But I insist. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so that's a blessing for me actually. To me, the most hilarious role was John and his friends. You know, because I tried my best not to laugh. I have to tell Femi to step it down a little bit. Because I said, Femi, this is don't do, don't be don't be too funny in this thing. I have to beg him to please step it down a little bit. We I we tried our best to be serious. <laughs> and God helped us to be serious, you know. I'm sure if you check the making, you see like 10 takes, take one, take two, take three, because Femi is, bro, Femi is such a fantastic, wonderful, amazing German minister. And when he enters the character like this, he just enters. You know, you know all this distraction can lead to a pothole for the family and the whole. Uh, wait, bro, you see, you see, we actually don't need this advice. No, we don't. It's not for us. This is for, for the brother. Do you understand? Uh, Bro John, can we give you this brother's number so that you can help us call the brother? Why not? Give me the number. I trust the Holy Spirit to give me your trust. Okay, uh, that's good. Um, so, 080-052-512-8683. Sorry? Must be a mistake here. This is my number. One of the beautiful things about Bemi are the things that the scenes we shot. You know, literally when we shot Bemi last year, and we there were some scenes that were lost, and we had to reshoot those scenes. I discovered, even everybody discovered, that the scenes that we, we shot they, they they ended up becoming way better. The picture came out better. The acting was better than the scene we shot last year. No, so the scenes that we shot this year, the scenes that we shot this year, they end up becoming way better than the scenes that we shot last year. You know, so I say, could God deliberately allow the cost? God could have deliberately allowed this happen because he knows that look, even the costumes, everything, they came, they ended up coming out better. The last scene of Wayne, it was way better than the last scene that we shot last year. You know, so it, everything came out better. It came out, you know, wonderful. To that, I give God the glory. So I told myself, look, if God allowed this. I drive to crash. 
to give us two lessons. Number one, that we call this movie The Waiting Room. You have to experience the waiting room yourself as cast and crew. All right? Number two, that after The Waiting Room, what you lost can will end up becoming better. At the end of the day, by the time you receive it, it's like the glory of the latter end shall be far greater than the glory of the glory of the former. That was how it was for us. You know, so I think I said, even this is a lesson for us as cast and as crew, that whatever you think you've lost in your waiting period, it's not a, it's not it's not a, it's not a loss. At the end of the day, you've gained something. You end up you end up gaining something better. What we shot ended up becoming way better. You can't even compare them. If you bring out maybe the former one we shot last year and this new one, you will shake it like, what this one, what are you thinking when we shot this? You know, that's how wonderful God is. <laughs> so I decided I must gather you all and share this news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready to hear? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. I can't see the excitement. Yes. Yes. You are ready to hear. Yes. Yes. I should burst the bubble. Yes. I should share the news. Yes. <laughs> okay, we are pregnant. Yes. Very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, happy for me. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, God bless you. Oh, the Lord is good all oh, the time. And this is beyond and today. And this is beyond and today. Amazing crew. Wonderful people. We're just thankful for the crew that we have in Mount Zion. Wonderful men of God that God brought to help us to make it reality. You know, even the cast, you know, the cast of the crew, they have to come all the way. You know, from where they have to reshoot. They have to come. We told them that look at them as crash over. So you will, you know, one of the things that Brother Ito Parabudu told me, he said, Oops, that when I told him, he said, said, What happened now? We have to wait for Baby Tattoo. What's happening? I said, Our drive crashed. And he said, Ah, I never scratched. Hope you are eating. <laughs> I guess he must have gone through a similar experience. He said he couldn't eat, you know. Because it's not a funny thing to, to do that kind of thing. But I thank God for the cast and the crew. I thank God for um the, so you know if I can I can, I can mention everyone's name. Um brought Toby Olimi is the ones you know behind the camera right now. I think it was like assistant director and also the DOP, right? Yeah, assistant director and DOP for life. We have brother Wally. Yeah, we have Brother Tolu also for light. We had we had Brother Mayo. Wow, we have uh, uh, we have Brother Toby Singh as the third person. You know, we have um, Brother Babadi also as the third person. We have um, there are many, there are many, and they are wonderful prayer for all the people who are around around on set. My prayer for them that God will continue to bless them because you know these are people that work selflessly. They, putting their all you know it's not about money for them it's about just bringing out the vision it's like they're cooking the food for people to just eat so fat people can eat they are fine you know so and people ate and they were filled and and the results you know, so when we read actually we read the youtube comments we read every single thing and we are always excited to see that people are blessed when they watch this movie that's that's our joy to see that people are blessed you know even our father too uh daddy mike bamelay when we told him that the hard drive has crashed, it was just, I was like, wow, how come? That's never happened before. <laughs> you know, he said, you know, even our backup to his sports, he said, wow. But he prayed for us and he was with us all through. Mommy too was with us all through. She was on our welfare and she was also always helping, always checking up on us, you know. So, God will bless everyone that had made baby a success. Wow, 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 wow. This is so deep. Very, very deep. Kai, so many lessons. Thank you so much, Damilola Mike Bamile, for granting us that interview. May the Lord bless you and increase you on a daily basis in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The anointing, the unction of the Lord upon your life will never run dry in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We appreciate you. Honestly, I really want to tell you that we appreciate you in Beyond Entertainment Show. Our people appreciate you. The body of Christ appreciates you. Keep doing the good work and may the Lord keep you till the very end in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Thank you so much, Ella, Dr. Ella, Mike Bamiloye. We really appreciate you to think about it that along the line you were pregnant and then you had to go to the labor room to put to bed and then came back on set to shoot. Ella, we appreciate you. No be small thing. Thank you so much. And you see, don't let your husband hear this. So since you came into the life of Damilola, a lot of things have changed. His height, his weight, his stomach, and everything about him. Ella, you are doing a good job. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for backing this kind of script. We appreciate you honestly. You are a good wife to your husband every time he talks about you. And sometimes I wonder when you call, even while we're shooting, then we say, please excuse me, my wife is calling me and pick the call. We're learning. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Ella, the Lord bless you, we appreciate you. Mm. Yes, this is a wrap. We are coming to the end of another show of Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO, the stories behind the movies. Until I come your way another time with another guest on this show, please, we need you to keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Thank you very much and may the Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you, I pray for myself. That in this year, 2022, we will not pass out. We will not die. But we will live to preach the goodness of the Lord, to talk about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the mighty name of Jesus. Our eyes will not see death. Evil will not see us. We will not see them. The one that keep us, we keep keeping us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that greater is the one that lives in us than the one that lives in the world. It will keep us till the very end. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I appreciate you. I love you. And for all of us that have been waiting for game season two, please, we appreciate you. We appreciate your patience. It has taken us a lot. We have been shooting for months and we are yet to go through where we should and then go on break and shoot and go on break. We've been doing back to back, but the Lord has really helped us. We are gone really, really far. You know, we just have some couple of scenes that are remaining and very soon, between now and early next month, we'll be through with all of the scenes that are remaining. And of course, as I'm talking to you, the post-production is going on, scoring the music and everything. You know, it takes a lot. When we see people on the street and everywhere saying, where is game season two? Please keep praying for us. It is not a joke to shoot a whole season of a movie with over 250 scenes. It's not a joke at all. It has taken a lot, a lot, a lot. And of course, with the grace of God and with your support, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Game season two is coming your way. And I tell you soon and very soon by the grace of God. Please don't stop praying for us. We appreciate all of your prayers. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and women, so that for God, and this is beyond and today, and this is beyond and today, beyond entertainment. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.